Let me now take you through the mechanisms of action of SNRIs, serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors. Now we know that when we talk about reuptake inhibitors, we've obviously got CERT here, which was the serotonin transporter. But when it comes to SNRIs, we also have the NAT, which is the noradrenaline transporter. The function of the transporter is to take up, and that's why it's called a reuptake, noradrenaline from the synaptic cleft into the presynaptic neuron. What SNRIs do is they will inhibit both CERT and NAT, and therefore there will be lots of serotonin and noradrenaline floating around in the synaptic cleft, so extracellular increase in noradrenaline and serotonin. Of course, that will go and bind to these receptors, stimulating A, the postsynaptic neuron for an action potential mediating the effects. Now, one of the important things here is NAT blockade also results in an increased diffusion of dopamine, but not to the same extent as, say, a direct DAT inhibitor or another agent that actually releases dopamine from the presynaptic neuron. So it's to an extent that is still present so that nor adrenergic blockade through an SNRI can improve frontal dopamine release. And one of the things that NAT does in the prefrontal cortex, you see the prefrontal cortex does not have many DAT. So it does not have significant dopamine transporters. So what NAT does is it does the function for dopamine in the prefrontal cortex. So essentially what we have with an SNRI is we have increased serotonin, we have increased noradrenaline, and we also have a little bit of increased dopamine. Now the other important thing when it comes to SNRIs is we've got to recognize that not all SNRIs are the same. So when we think about venlafaxine, for example, they've got different NAT to CERT affinity. So venlafaxine with regards to CERT, let's say CERT, versus noradrenergic affinity is 30 is to one. Desvenlafaxine, when it comes to CERT versus NAT, is 10 is to one. Duloxetine is also 10 is to one. Milnasopran, which is evidence-based in the treatment of fibromyalgia, and you can see why, is one is to one. So we've got quite a significant noradrenergic activity coming up with milnasopran as compared to duloxetine. And finally, we have levomilnasopran. And with levomilnasopran, it is one is to two. So again, it's more towards noradrenergic property than serotonergic. The reason why this is relevant is the issue with venlafaxine is when you prescribe venlafaxine initially, and if you are wanting to treat melancholic depression, where we know activity, cognition, the dopaminergic and noradrenergic pathways are affected. As you go up the dose above 225, 375 and 425, you not only get the increase in dopamine and noradrenaline, blood pressure needs to be monitored, but you also continue to get the increases in serotonin and that can result in side effects. For example, when you're treating patients above the age of 65, side effects such as gastrointestinal bleeding, for example, hypertension, and ACE-IDH becomes significant because of this continued serotonergic activity. So do keep that aspect in mind with venlafaxine. You get a sequential increase of both serotonin and noradrenaline. And that's the reason why it's helpful to think about, say, desvenlafaxine or duloxetine in the treatment of more severe forms of depression because you've got a more differential noradrenergic potentiation activity that helps with that prefrontal cortex, increased dopamine, noradrenaline, which is what we need, and including the striatum. The other aspect to take into account, noradrenaline plays a very, very important role, particularly when it activates the alpha-2 receptors because it activates the noradrenergic inhibition of the descending spinal pain 
neurons. So the pain sensation in the spinal cord is reduced through the action of noradrenaline on the alpha-2 receptors. And that's the reason why duloxetine, melanosepran, levomelanosepran have advantages in pain syndromes. Of course, there's venlafaxine as well, venlafaxine to a certain extent as well. Venlafaxine also has mu opioid properties. And this may be one of the reasons why its withdrawal is amongst the most significant, similar to paroxetine as well. Paroxetine has some anticholinergic properties, which is probably what makes the withdrawal of paroxetine and the withdrawal of venlafaxine quite significant. Milnasopran and levomilnasopran, because of its differential, significant noradrenergic potentiation, can be very useful agents in fibromyalgia. They're also useful in peripheral neuropathic pain, for example, diabetic neuropathy, etc.